Harlow was one of the most iconic blondes of all time. In this video, I'm going to show you the evolution of her hair and how it changed over the years. Hello lovelies, my name is Laura and in this video, I'm going to take you on a journey through time as we explore the evolution of Jean Harlow's iconic blonde hair. She was one of the most beautiful women of her time and her look has inspired many other celebrities throughout history. So join me as we take a closer look at her style and how it evolved over the years. We immediately think of Marilyn Monroe when we think of the most famous blonde bombshell in cinema history. I am a tremendous fan of Marilyn as you may know from all my videos as well as the many other superstars that drew inspiration from her. Yet Jean Harlow had an impact on an entire generation of people who were born in the 1930s, not only Marilyn. Marilyn Monroe never concealed the fact that she took inspiration from Harlow's defining characteristics including her sexuality, her commanding presence on screen, her quick wit, and of course, her renowned platinum white bleached hair. While Marilyn was still Norma Jean, she used to go to the movies, and after seeing stars like Jean Harlow, Betty Davis, and Joan Crawford, as well as Greta Garbo and others from that era, she knew she wanted to be a movie star too. On the other hand, Harlene Harlow Carpenter had received much greater pressure from her mother to adopt the moniker Jean Harlow. Years later, in the 1950s, Marilyn Monroe would get a terrible script for a future biopic about Jean Harlow. By this time, she was already well known. Of course, she had always wanted to play her idol in a movie. She said, I hope they don't do that to me after I'm gone. Horrified by the crude script, regrettably, they did and it became worse. Marilyn passed away in 1962 and three years later in 1965, two forgettable biographical movies on Harlow's life would be released. Both were titled Harlow and the first was released by Magnat Corporation in May with Carol Leaney and the second by Paramount Pictures in June with Carol Baker. In the first, Ginger Rogers portrayed Mama Jean. In the second, Angela Lansbury. Both failed both critically and commercially and it's kind of interesting if you think about it when Marilyn says, I hope someone doesn't do that about me and look what happened with the movie Blonde. That's basically like Marilyn Monroe's worst nightmare. A girl from the Midwest, Harlow, her parents were Skip Harlow, a wealthy real estate broker, and Jean Poe Carpenter, a working class girl from Kansas City, Missouri, who was born on March 3rd, 1911. Montclair Carpenter was her father. Skip Carpenter helped Jean Carpenter get married when she was still a minor, but Jean was unhappy there and grew bitter. Nonetheless, a mother Jean and Montclair stayed together in Skip Harlow Kansas City home for a while. Harlene was developing into a beautiful little girl, but her mother was growing weary and dissatisfied with her personal life. Her ash blonde hair was her natural hue and she had green deep set eyes. Even during her time in Hollywood at MGM, she would be known by the nickname The Baby the rest of her life. Harlene would not discover that her real name was not Baby until she was five years old. When Harlene's mother filed for a divorce, which was ultimately finalized in September 1922, she was a senior in high school. Mother Jean was bored and restless and all that she could think about was going to Hollywood and being a movie star. She made the decision to relocate permanently and left with her daughter, Jean Harlene for Hollywood. When Jean Carpenter was advised that she was too old to start a career in the movies, she was 34 in 1923. She was devastated, but not for long. Jean Carpenter made the decision to turn her daughter into a movie star after that. The well-known stage mother, melodrama that is frequently shown in films, novels, and in theater involves Mama Jean using her daughter to pursue her own aspirations of fame and celebrity. 
after making this her first significance appearance of her career, Jean Harlow unexpectedly rose to fame both locally and internationally. Although the general audience liked her, the majority of the critics were not amused and never missed an opportunity to belittle her performances. She was stunning and it would be an understatement to say that she had great sex appeal. Even Harlow herself held the belief that she was not a good actress for a very long time. After all, she had never intended to pursue a career as an actress in the first place. Before Marilyn Monroe, Jane Mansfield, Diana Doors, Mammy Van Doren, and others, Jean Harlow was regarded as the era's blonde sex icon. Unfortunately, she was a dumb blonde in every sense. Even though she had some success with the Hells Angels, she was later hired as an uncredited extra for Chaplin City Lights, but her performance was removed from the finished product. She would continue taking on little roles and appearing in unrelated public events until her major role. Despite her growing popularity, reviewers frequently made fun of her acting abilities, and Howard Hughes dispatched her to several personal appearances to promote Hell's Angels in an effort to advance her career, despite the fact that she detested public speaking and had no idea what to say or do in front of an audience mostly filled with men who could only pay attention to her body. The two films at Columbia were Three Wise Girls, 1931, and Platinum Blonde, 1931. The former, which was directed by Frank Capra, made use of Harlow's well-known that platinum blonde hair color. Along with her curves, she was becoming well-known for her platinum hair, which inspired many other women to dye their hair the same shade. This left many of them with damaged hair or even becoming bald from the frustration. No one was able to match Harlow's shade in the nationwide platinum blonde competition series with a $10,000 grand prize. According to reports, she used weekly applications of ammonia, Clorox bleach, and Lux soap flakes to acquire her hair color. The resulting heavy treatment would weaken Harlow's naturally ash blonde hair, and occasionally she would practically go hairless. In the years from 1933 to 1934, Jean Harlow began to write a novel. Some people think she found the time since she was unhappy with her responsibilities at the studio at the time, and MGM was on a salary strike. Perhaps attempting to present a different self to the world or trying something novel and intellectual. Apart from her dumb blonde movie persona, Jean was a very intelligent reader who was frequently spotted in between shots reading. Today's Tonight would not be published until 1965 when Grove Press and Dell Publishing would posthumously release it. Several individuals believe that the book was ghostwritten, but according to news reports, Harlow received help from scriptwriter Carrie Wilson for the book. Before Jean's passing, the novel was completed and during her life, her stepfather Marino Bello sought to sell it a few studios with the intention of making a movie based on it. But MGM refused to let Harlow use her services as an artist without the studio's consent. Once Harlow passed away, Mama Jean gave Metro the rights to the movie while keeping the publishing rights. Unfortunately, no movie was ever made and Ruth Louise Hemp, a friend of Harlow's, decided to finally publish it in 19. 65 after Mama Jean's death in 1958. The novel by Jean Harlow was published at last. Despite the fact that Greta Garbo, Joan Crawford, and Norma Shear's popularity among MGM audiences significantly fell, Jean Harlow's celebrity continued to soar, generating outstanding box office earnings even in the midst of the Great Depression. Perhaps her personal charm, natural acting, and approachable demeanor drew in moviegoers, particularly the common majority of low-wage workers who could relate to her better. As one of the biggest stars in the U.S. at the time, she received the most votes when the topic of ticket sales was discussed. 
Harlow's on-screen demeanor was now drastically shifting. The studio immediately removed her from the list of sex symbols because of the Hayes Code. Also, it was a perfect chance for Jean to land more realistic roles, which allowed her to shift her attention from constantly trying to be seductive to acting for a change. Her roles became more intense and less glamorous, and her hair got darker. Bombshell and blonde, a phrase that has become so commonplace in our collective lexicon that its relevance has diminished. Jean Harlow introduced us to this phrase, which was once a discovery. First platinum blonde, she became a favorite leading lady of the 1930s thanks to her legendary locks and her penchant for donning body-hugging dresses without underwear. Many believe that the chemicals used to treat her hair were the cause of her early death after it occurred. Is this a Hollywood myth or is it actually true? And how much did it cost her to become the first platinum blonde? It is an old Hollywood legend that strong men use their influence to produce and birth stars. Not of the cost, actresses endured both emotional and external suffering in order to become famous. One of the innumerable actresses who underwent cosmetic procedures in order to become a leading lady was Jean Harlow. At the age of 18, Howard Hughes cast Harlow as a vamp in his 1930 movie House Angels. To her disgust, this character would grow to be her specialty, but one that would catapult her into fame. The phrase platinum blonde was coined by Howard Hughes and was first used with Jean Harlow. Think of Mary Pickford as America's sweetheart and Clara Bow as the it girl as examples of popular nicknames for celebrities at the period used for marketing purposes. Hughes wanted his leading lady to experience something unique as the star of his movies, the phrase platinum blonde was therefore created, a term that Harlow would eventually despise but moviegoers adored. Her hair captured the attention of the globe, many other women bought peroxide to try and get the same appearance. How precisely did Harlow get the well-known white halo? Harlow said that her hair was golden by nature. When a reporter inquired about the platinum trend, she responded using chemicals to bleach your hair can't be good. My own has only ever been cleaned with soap and water. While naturally blonde, her hair in Hell's Angels is more of an ashy blonde, suggesting that she must have gone above and beyond to get the nearly iridescent appearance. She used bleach in her hair to get the platinum blonde and peroxide ammonia, Clorox, and Lux flakes. Her hair hairdresser Alfred Pagano admitted. She spent each Sunday getting her roots touched up at Jim's Beauty Shop on Sunset Boulevard. Each and every Sunday. Think about that. For almost four years, she had her hair bleached every Sunday in the pursuit of fame and beauty. And that is terrifying. I feel like my scalp would be so dry and itchy if I did that to my hair every Sunday. Eventually, Harlow's fragile, damaged hair began to come out. Reckless, a 1935 film was in the middle of production when this happened. MGM started evaluating the damage right away because they didn't want word to spread that the platinum blonde was losing her hair. They invited Marcel Mathieu, a hair expert, to the set. It was pouring out all over the place and he understood at once that it was too late. It had been demolished entirely. MGM urged that filming would go on regardless of the problem because they didn't want to postpone it any longer. If they touch her again, she'll have no hair at all. Matthew cried in outrage. He applied olive oil onto her scalp to stop the breakage and attempt to correct the problem and assist her to go through filming, but it was insufficient. For the rest of the filming, Harlow wore wigs that were specifically created for her. It should be recalled that Jean Harlow actually detested her platinum blonde hair. Harlow, a self-described lousy actress, once said, Hollywood wouldn't know I was alive if it weren't for the color of my hair. Roles that match the hair came with it, sultry, blatant, and sleazy. She portrayed a character who was the antithesis of who she really was. I've always despised my hair, not just because it hindered me as an actress, but because it hampered me as a person, she said in admission. I had to live up to the platinum personality because it made me look impressive and hardworking. She was remembered as a sweet, loving, and fun youngster by everyone who knew her. But despite having golden hair, she never felt valued or well represented 
represented. She was so delighted when the studio decided to give her a new appearance. The studio was ready to recast their star after a career of performing daring roles and damaging her hair in the process. What would be better than going from a feisty woman to a lady? She was referred to as a brownette and had her hair or what was left of it tinted halfway brown. She was given a wig and a hue that matched. Even though Harlow adored her new appearance, she would not have many opportunities to fully utilize it in her professional or social life. Her alabaster complexion had a grayish tint and her friends and co-workers began to notice that her face was perpetually swollen. She had migraines all the time without recognizing any significant underlying issues. Many people blamed Harlow's heavy drinking for this. Harlow complained of stomach difficulties while working on the set of Saratoga. She left early for home to rest. Nobody would have been able to predict her death. Friends were shocked in the days before her death. She was double her size due to extreme bloating. Close friends and regular partner Clark Gable visited the dying actress and remarked it was like kissing a dead person, a rotting person. After smelling urine on her breath, she was misdiagnosed as having an enlarged gallbladder and continued to experience severe stomach pains and vomiting. Harlow passed away on June 7th, 1937, just 10 days after leaving leaving the Saratoga set early due to flu-like symptoms. Three months before, she turned 26, and it's just so devastating. I feel like that would be one of the worst deaths, especially with nowadays in like modern science, like it, that wouldn't have happened, so it's kind of sad. Her premature demise was the subject of rumors. Abortion gone wrong, cancer, polio, syphilis. Moreover, the chemical hair treatment she underwent caused peroxide poisoning. Even if the chemical she put in her hair inflicted irreversible harm to it, only her hair was affected. Actually, Harlow had been deteriorating for years. She either developed acute renal failure or uremic poisoning. All of the indications were present. The swelling skin that is grayish. She was unable to urinate as normal, but Clark Gable had noticed that she was exhaling waste and sweating it out. She got a case of scarlet fever when she was 15, and that is what led to her renal failure. Her kidneys had been deteriorating for years, but no one knew it. There wasn't much that could have been done for Harlow in the 1930s, even if their diagnosis had been accurate. Kidney transplants and dialysis were not yet available. Despite suffering because of being a brilliant blonde, the Hollywood urban tale that she died from peroxide poisoning is untrue. She not only lost her hair, but she also struggled to forge her own identity. Like so many other actresses of the time, Harlow was limited in how much of her profession she could control. Harlow was at the mercy of the male studio executives, male directors, and the paying spectators who paid to see a platinum blonde. Tragically, her life and career were cut short. She may have been able to establish her own identity on the screen though, if she had been given more time. Bleach ultimately failed to kill the beauty, but it succeeded in hiding her true identity. Sadly, it is old Hollywood show business. With Harlow's platinum blonde hair as the inspiration, Marilyn Monroe and a multitude of other modern day celebrities have further cemented her impact in pop culture. Her transformation redefined the definition of beauty in the 1930s, setting standards that remain relevant to this day. The evolution of Jean Harlow's iconic blonde hair is a testament to an incredible legacy that Marilyn Monroe herself went on to incorporate into her brand and identity. No matter the era, it seems that Jean's influence and glamour will never fade away. And it's interesting because I feel like Jean Harlow was the first entertainment industry mistreating blondes, and there's so many after that. It even reminds me of Pamela Anderson in some ways. Anyways, thanks for watching and let me know if you want me to cover any other tragic blondes. Alright, and don't forget to check out some of my other videos. See you soon. Bye.